Yes, well, the American people are going to have to insist on paper ballots with real identification. That's going to be one of the well, key things Well, that's going to be great for stop. the next... I'm, I'm not even... I'm, Sydney, I've got to tell you, I'm not even going to contemplate the next election. <laughs> I'm not even contemplating the January 5th election in Georgia. The hell with that. If the people of Georgia are dumb enough, after what they have gone through in the November 3rd election, to then go toward January 5th and a runoff and think that changing nothing will change the outcome, then the people of Georgia aren't half as smart as I believe them to be. And I believe the patriots in Georgia should stop this nonsense now. It is not something that to be decided about uh, over who do you favor, which party, which uh, candidate. This is now about faith in the electoral system in one specific state that may control the destiny of this country. And by God, it's too important for anyone. And I don't care what party you're in. I don't care whether you're an independent. This is too important to act as if nothing happened on November 3rd and exactly. to pretend that there will be a different outcome on January 5th. It's idiotic. What you're seeing here is Fox's Lou Dobbs effectively throwing in the towel on the upcoming Georgia Senate runoffs, all because Trump and his allies are failing to overturn the results of the election in the courts. That's what this is, a temper tantrum from a Trump sycophant because he's incapable of accepting defeat. And so he's doing something that, frankly, I have no issue with, which is cutting off his nose to spite his face. Now, here's the thing. I legitimately can't tell whether Lou Dobbs believes his own conspiracy theories about the Georgia election, or if he's just that committed to the bit that he's willing to lose the Senate over it. But the facts here are simple. There was no fraud, and so as a result, there's nothing to change. People like Lou Dobbs and his guest Sidney Powell are losing their minds over a straw man. Consider this, if there was actually the widespread fraud that they're claiming, don't you think that would have been presented in court? And yet out of the 55 cases brought forward by the Trump campaign and its allies, they've won only one single case. And that was to shorten a cure deadline in Pennsylvania from nine to six days. Otherwise, they failed to prove any of the fraud that they've been wailing about publicly in a number of instances to judges that Trump himself appointed. In other words, none of this is based in reality and just complaining about it on TV every night isn't gonna make it real. And by the way, Lou Dobbs and Sidney Powell aren't the only Republicans to demand withholding support in Georgia. Sidney Powell's fellow lawyer, Lynn Wood, has also been campaigning on the exact same message. Where's Kelly Loeffler here? Where's David Perdue? He ought to be standing right here. Those two people want your vote, then they ought to tell you what we're Get a special session of the legislature now. Do not be fooled twice. This is Georgia. We ain't dumb. We're not going to go vote on January 5th in another machine made by China. You're not going to fool Georgians again. If Kelly Loeffler wants your vote, if David Perdue wants your vote, they've got to earn it. They've got to demand publicly, repeatedly, Consistently, Brian Kemp call a special session of the Georgia legislature. And if they do not do it, if Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue do not do it, they have not earned your vote. Don't you give it to them. Why would you go back and vote in another rigged election? For God's sakes, fix it. You got to fix it before we'll do it again. They've already got 800,000 absentee ballots. I gotta say, when the entire Republican Party lined up behind this guy like he was a hero for representing Nick Sandman and Kyle Rittenhouse, I wonder how they feel about raising the stock of the person who's now actively working to undermine their own party. I'm starting to think that there might be consequences to amplifying fringe figures whose allegiances are to conspiracy theories and lies. Even Donald Trump himself has been especially unhelpful when it comes to these Georgia Senate runoffs. Last week he held a rally in Georgia that was ostensibly to help Kelly Leffler and David Perdue, but of the roughly hour and 45 minutes that he was on stage, he allocated a grand total of two minutes to the Republican candidates. Two minutes. And when they did speak, this is what they had to deal with. We need you to vote January 5th. If you're our voice on January 5th, we'll be your voice for years. We have to make sure that we keep America strong. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, you know what? My colleague, David Perdue, my good friend, wants to make sure that you vote. We are going to vote because if we don't vote, we will lose the country. If we vote, we will win. Hey, guys, I want to take liberty just one second. I want to say something personal to President Trump. Hey, guys, I want to say something for President Trump personally. Guys, I want to say something personal for President Trump. God bless you. We love you, Mr. President. We love the First Lady. And we're going to fight and win those two seats and make sure you get a fair, square deal in the state of Georgia. God bless you, Mr. President. Well, thank you very much. And yet, because Trump could not care less about anyone who is not Donald Trump, he stood there silently while his audience chanted, fight for Trump every time they tried to open their mouths. Not exactly the ringing endorsement they were hoping for. Also, there's the fact that if Leffler and Purdue do decide to join Trump in his play acting and pretend that the election was rigged, they're basically telling their voters that Georgia's elections are not to be trusted. At the same time, they'd be trying to get them to vote in yet another Georgia election. They would literally be hurting themselves. But let's just be honest here, this is exactly what Trump wants them to do, because Trump doesn't care about them or the US Senate or anyone other than himself. He's only interested in preserving his own campaign, even if doing so is actively hurting the Republican Party's only hope of keeping the Senate. Still, he's only interested in perpetuating a rigged election claim that will only serve to reduce trust among the Republicans in Georgia's elections. Turns out handing over the keys to the kingdom to an egomaniac might not have been the best idea after all. But if Republicans have shown us anything over the last several years, it's that they want a bunch of tinfoil hat wearing lunatics to be the mouthpieces for their party. And that's exactly what they're getting right now. They're now being held captive by people like Lou Dobbs and Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood, all of whom are insisting that there's massive fraud and yet haven't succeeded in proving even a modicum of fraud when it actually counts. And unless Judge Janine starts issuing rulings, it doesn't look like that pattern is going to change. So while I don't normally agree with fringe figures on the right, this is one instance where I'd make an exception. Republicans should sit out when it comes to the Georgia Senate runoffs. And when that's the case, those on the right should take a long, hard look in the mirror about the consequences of amplifying conspiracy theories, propping up lies and misinformation, and fostering an environment where the only people who are rewarded are those who traffic in disinformation and chaos. It doesn't come without consequences. And we're seeing that play out on the right at this very moment. If you like this video, please check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I take a deep dive into the week's most important stories and interview major players in politics, including Kamala Harris, Katie Porter, Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, Eric Swalwell, Mary Trump, Al Franken, Cory Booker, and many, many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.